living on the edge. Imagine an ice cube surrounded by water, one that's just a little bit bigger than this one, say the size of the United States. And imagine that you had to live on that huge piece of ice. Where would you hang out? In the middle of the ice or near the edge by the water? You'd probably want to live near the edge, close to the water. Because if you're living on ice in a cold, cold place, water is the warmest thing around. Penguins in Antarctica live on ice. There's land underneath, but the surface is a huge sheet of ice. Now, you and I might not call the waters around Antarctica warm, but it's warmer than the ice. And because it's warm, other things live in the water. Things that can be food. That's why penguins are always living on the edge. Where the ocean meets the snow, that's the place you call home. You're living, living on the edge. Where the water meets the ice, that's the place you spend your life. You're living, living on the edge. Antarctica, it's hard to survive in. But the ocean's a place to stay alive in, just dive in. of seals and penguins who live on land in water too are living, living on the edge. They're living, living on the edge. Living on the edge. Deborah is in Antarctica, where scientists are studying animals living on the edge. Six kinds of seals live in Antarctica. These are Waddell seals. Their calls echo across the ice. This group of seals lives on ice near shore. There are year-round cracks that allow the seals to get through to the water below. It is a time of year when mothers and their newborn pups stay together on the ice. Each mom has one pup a year and will stay with it until it's old enough to die for food itself. That usually takes about two months. These pups are already over a month old. Seals have lived out here on the ice for thousands of years. Only in the last 20 have visitors arrived. Since the 1960s, scientists have been coming to this site to study how Waddell seals live. It's a long walk, so we drive over the ice in tractors. I'm the one carrying a flag and bucket. <laughs> a small fall. No matter where you are in Antarctica, something unexpected can always happen. Well, let's keep going. Tagged. 
We're on the ice checking pups for identification tags. The poles help us look from a safe distance. They also help us test the strength of the ice. We're looking for pups that haven't been tagged yet. There's a lot of blood on the ice from fights between males. Because the ice doesn't melt, the blood stays around for a long time. This pup needs tags. Once we find an untagged pup, biologist Ward Testa and I set things up away from the mother and pup. We don't want to upset them. We put a tag in each flipper. So I'll give you a set. Put one on myself. Tagging is an important part of research right. because it allows scientists to keep track of individual animals and to study the whole seal population right. over long periods of time. Ah, uh, that's why. Okay. Spread the flipper. All right, got it. Got the first one. All right, I'll get the. Oh, oh well. Got him. The tags go into a membrane between the flippers where there are few nerves and the pup is unhurt. Male. Male pup. The mom's tag. She's 481 Scarlet. 436 Scarlet. 481 Scarlet, 436 Scarlet. Right. Got it. The whole operation takes only a minute. We leave the seals quickly so things can return to normal. What's the population of seals here? Seals that use the bay um, regularly uh, probably number around 1,200. How many seals do you tag? Right now we have about half the adult population marked, and every year we tag all the pups, so we get a complete count of the pups. From the ones that you tag, how many do you see again? That, that ranges a lot of, from year to year. Uh, Sometimes it's a little over half. Some years it's as high as 90% of the females. Adult males somewhat lower. There's seals all over the world. Why are you here in Antarctica studying seals? Mostly because the seals in Antarctica don't run away. So we get a chance to, to handle them and, and study their habits a lot more closely than you could in, in almost any other place in the world. Do you think one of the reasons the seals don't run away is that they haven't experienced humans attacking them or trying to kill them like some of the animals in the north? That's partly it. In general, it's because there are no surface predators here. So no polar bears, true. no Eskimos. All right, the uh, only land animal is a wingless fly. That's right. <laughs> and I've seen pups do things like climb out of the hole when I walk up. Our work for today is done. The seals stay behind, living well on the edge of a harsh continent a continent that is their home. Green smoke stands out sharply against the sea ice, guiding us to a safe landing. Before the engines are turned off, a crewman drills a hole in the ice to make sure it's at least two feet thick, thick enough to support the helicopter's full weight. We're near the ice edge, and it's melting as the summer temperature rises. It feels good taking power down. Watching close by are emperor penguins, the largest of all penguins that live in Antarctica. It's 11 o'clock at night, and the penguins are still active. 
I'm sitting here on the ice edge surrounded by emperor penguins. And they're not afraid to come right up to me. They have no reason to fear humans. Because all their enemies are in the water. On the ice, they're safe. <laughs> Penguins are birds whose wings are adapted for swimming, not flying. When penguins aren't in the water fishing, they're on land, spending a lot of time, well, I'm not sure what they're doing, but it seems like communication. With densely packed feathers and a thick layer of blubber to keep them warm, penguins are well suited to the harsh Antarctic climate. Emperor penguins stand over three feet tall and weigh more than 60 pounds. All emperor penguins have a distinctive yellow marking on the side of their heads. Other kinds of penguins have different markings. underwater, but seem awkward walking on ice. Their feet don't freeze. Blood flowing through their feet is carefully controlled to keep them just warm enough. spend most of their time huddled together on the ice edge, where they can easily get to the sea for food. The emperor penguin, one of the few animals that has adapted well to living in Antarctica. I'm glad I don't have to live in a place like Antarctica. I get cold just thinking about it. But the amazing thing is that penguins, seals, and other animals have adapted to that frozen continent. Antarctica is a continent covered with ice. Very few kinds of animals live there, mostly seals and penguins. And they live at the edge of the continent, near the water. Because in Antarctica, the land is so cold that water is the warmest place to be. 3 to one Classroom Contact is a production of the Children's Television Workshop.